Now, what I talked about today is, uh, you know, we've certainly, in looking at patients with melanoma, we know uh, that, you know, there have been tremendous advances in treating patients with melanoma. You know, 11 new regimens approved in the past five years, which is staggering. And, but we know that even though all those advances have taken place, there's still a lot of limitations. Um, and so not everyone responds to these treatments, and uh, we want to know how to, how to make people respond better and ultimately to prevent melanoma altogether. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we did was, you know, we wanted to take a different angle uh, because we know that there's a growing appreciation of, you know, the, the microbiome and health and disease, and we wanted to take a look at the microbiome and its role in patients with melanoma. And so uh, we, at MD Anderson Cancer Center, where, where I work, we basically, every patient who came in, you know, who had melanoma that had spread throughout their body, who was going on to some form of treatment, we asked them if we could do a, a cheek swab to look at the microbiome within their mouth. And then we also gave them a, a, little, a little sample, a <laughs> container, for them to give us a, a sample from, uh, you know, essentially a fecal sample, you know, to look at the gut microbiome. And uh, we did this, started about a year and a half ago, or close to two years ago. And over the past two years, collected samples from over 200 patients with metastatic melanoma, or melanoma that spread throughout the body, went on to therapy. And uh, what we did is we then actually did sequencing. We looked at the microbiome very closely and deeply uh, using you know, these genetic techniques to sequence the bacteria within the microbiome. What we found is that uh, the, in the mouth, you know, we didn't see any differences between uh, people who responded well to therapy versus those who didn't. Um, but we did see differences in the gut microbiome. So when we looked at the stool samples of patients who were going on to this form of immunotherapy, or PD-1, or pembrolizumab, um, or nivolumab, what we found is that uh, in, the, in the gut microbiome of those, of those patients, the patients who responded had a, some, a more diverse uh, gut microbiome, meaning that they had, you know, a more more rich uh, you know, complement of bacteria within their gut, which is kind of known to go along with good health. And um, in addition to that, they also had a different type of bacteria in their gut. Um, and you know, and so uh, what it told us was that you know maybe this is actually influencing the responses. And so then we also you know in those patients who would come in. Uh, they also, many of them, had actually had a little biopsy of their tumors. And so we looked at the immune system within their tumors, and lo and behold, we found that uh, if you look at the tumors in uh, these patients, you know, the ones who respond have uh, more immune cells in their tumors. Um, and you can actually correlate that with the, with the good bacteria that are related to the response. And so what this means to us is that, you know, that maybe we can just, you know, help treat patients and you know, enhance responses to therapy, not only by giving them medicines intravenously, but by actually you know, somehow modulating the microbiome in their intestine. And that can be done in a number of different ways. You know, so you can give them a formulation, a little pill with bacteria in it you know, that could be potentially given to someone before they start on immunotherapy. And that's something we're looking into. Um, it's possible also that you know that diet could influence this, but this is something that we're deeply studying now. Um, you know, a lot of patients come in to the office to see us and ask us, you know, what what should I be eating? You know, and and honestly, up until you know um, the last couple of years, I think most doctors just said, and what I certainly have said, you know, is just eat a normal, you know, healthy diet. But now I think. We're going to be learning a lot more about what specific foods that we can, you know, encourage people to eat. You know, fibers. You know, things that will promote a healthy gut microbiome and, you know, potentially help them respond to uh, therapy if they have cancer, and hopefully to even potentially help prevent cancer altogether.